let's go ahead and do the first page of our uh, CPI and inflation practice problems for this lesson. Remember that there needs to be three different things uh, present in order for uh, you to be able to calculate the CPI. And the first thing is we need the basket of goods. And uh, right here it says, assume the current basket is three fans, eight DVDs, and 14 picture frames. I'm just gonna throw that here, three fans, that way we can keep track of this, 18 DVDs, and 14 picture frames. The second thing we need to know is what is the base year? What are we going to index this against? Uh, for these questions, it tells us that the base year is 2006. I'm just gonna write base underneath this so we know it's the base year. And the third thing that we need is we need those prices from each year and we can see that we are given those prices. In this question, you're given some information that you don't need, and that's that you're given production data. Remember, the production data we would need for GDP, but we don't need that for CPI, which is what we're doing this week. So we can get rid of that production data because we aren't going to use it in this uh, practice problem. Let's go ahead and get started on this first part A, calculating the CPI for each year. Oh, that says here, so this should say each year. The first one is going to be the CPI in 2005. Well, you know, whatever year you're looking for, that's the cost of that basket you're gonna put in the numerator. And in the denominator, we want the cost in the base here. In this case, it's 2006. We multiply that by 100 to get it into an indexed value against the base year. So let's just go ahead and do that. So what did this basket cost? Well, there was three fans and that cost us $25. And then in our basket were eight DVDs and those each cost us $10. And in our basket, we also saw 14 picture frames and those each cost us $5. So that's going to be how much that basket costs in 2005. Now, what about in the base year? Well, there's three fans, and in the base year, those fans cost $28. We had eight DVDs, and those in the base year cost $12. And we still had 14 picture frames, and in the base year, those were $6. Multiply by 100 in order to get this into our base, or into an index that we are going to be comparing against a base year. Now, I want to pause for a second just to point out, right? Notice the basket does not change. So it doesn't matter what year. We've got three fans, eight DVDs, and 14 picture frames. So that's the thing about CPI is it's a constant market basket. I don't want to spend a bunch of time on plugging numbers into a calculator on a YouTube answer key video. So you can just plug this in yourself or just trust me that this is 85.22, 85.22. That is your CPI in the year 2005. Now, what about a CPI in the year 2006, which is our base year? Well, the cost in the year we're looking for, which is 06, divided by the cost we're looking for, which is 06 times 100. Well, those are going to cancel out. So this is just going to be 100. And that's the idea of an index in a base year is the base year is going to equal to 100. Lastly, let's go ahead and do CPI in 2007 which will be the cost in 07 divided by the cost in 06, because we're always dividing by the cost in the base year. Multiply by that 100 so we can get it into an index to compare against a base year. We do the exact same process. Three fans times, well now it's $28 in 2007. We still have eight DVDs in the basket. We multiply that by 13 because that's, again, how much DVDs are going to be costing now in 2007, which is the year we're looking for. And we notice that the 14 picture frames are now, again, multiplied by $5 because the price went back down to $5 in 2007. We divide this, again, by the cost uh, in 2006, which is the base year. Now, you may already have this number calculated out. I'm just going to write it all out so that we were all on the same page so you can see exactly that we are not changing the uh, the basket, but we are changing those prices to make them into the prices of 2006, which is our base year. Multiply that by 100, like we've been mentioning. If I go ahead and I plug these into my calculator, I'll get 97.73, 97.73, plugging all this stuff into my calculator. What do we notice? Well, we know from 05 to 06, the prices went up from 85.22 to 100. 
And then we know from 06 to 07, the prices went down. So we saw some inflation because the CPI increased. And then we saw some deflation because we saw the CPI uh, decrease. So let's go ahead and calculate the inflation rate between two years. So notice if we talk about the inflation rate of a specific year, we're taking the percentage change from the previous year. If we're looking for multiple years, we're just going to take the percentage change across that. So the inflation rate from 05 to 07 is just going to be 97.73 minus 85.22 divide that by 85.22, and we're going to multiply that by 100. If I plug that into my calculator, I get approximately 14.68%, meaning that prices between those two years increased by 14.68%. Now, what about just in the year 2006? Well, if I want the inflation rate for just a single year, I have to look at that year minus the previous year. So this would be 100 minus 85.22 divided by 85.22, and we multiply by that by 100. We throw that in the calculator and we get approximately 17.34%. So notice the difference between these two. This was talking about the inflation rate between multiple years, so you just take the difference between those two years. If it's just looking for the inflation rate in a single year, you're always looking at the percentage change from the previous year. That's why we would use 100 minus 85.22 in the second example. In the first example, we'd go from the end way back to the beginning because it asks you specifically between those two years. So that's a quick example of calculating CPI when you're given some data. I'll make sure that I have another video for uh, the next two practice problems that would go along with this worksheet, and I'll make sure that I link to those uh, here in this YouTube video for those of you not in my class that are looking for more practice when it comes to your inflation chapter in your introductory macroeconomics class.